Hi you guys, this is a Victron inverter charger and we're going to do a complete installation of it. Before we do that, let's just have a quick look and see how useful is one of these on a boat. So guys, the first thing when you take this piece of kit out of the box, the first thing I notice about it is the style of it. No longer do you have that old tin box, biscuit tin uh, type casing. This is a lovely plastic casing. It's aesthetically pleasing but that's hugely beneficial because what that means is now the amount of places you can install this are greatly increased no longer do you have to have this in the engine room or hidden away in the bilge you can mount this because this is not an ugly piece of kit this is quite a fancy looking unit and i'm quite happy to have this mounted where it is here in the lounge part of our boat okay the other thing that i really do like about this is that all the connections for this unit are on the outside of it you don't actually have to unscrew the cover you don't have to take the cover off and that makes it simple to connect up and it makes it very positive that you're certain it's either right or it's wrong i don't know about you but i would lead a very very happy life never seeing the inside of this unit at all i'm quite happy never to remove the cover but um i that that simplicity makes it easy simple is almost always right guys this is just a little bit of advice if you your loved one wants to come boating more often with you and they're whinging about like i would be oh i need to get my hair done i need to do this forget about the depth sounder the fish finder or all these gadgets that you have up on deck this is it the inverter mighty it is mighty hair straightener hair dryer and the old electric kettle it is brilliant I would never have thought I would have used one or I would have wanted one. But now that I have it, there's no way it's gone off the boat. It is fabulous. Well, thanks to Euromotive and Carrick and Shannon for supplying that to us. Yeah, and um, Euromotive also supplied the uh, Victron solar panels. So now we're in the, the situation where we can generate our own DC electricity with the solar panels. And then with the inverter, we can now convert that DC electricity into mains 240 volt and we can run all the electrical appliances that we choose like Hoover's, your hair dryer, hair straighteners, I used um, electric sanders with it, I used This has um, gone boom over my head <laughs> well, Oh look, just basic, it's a, an inverter, any women out there will just listen to me we can have our hair dryers, we can have our electric kettles, we can have our hair straighteners and mm -hmm. the men can have the Hoover's It is yeah. brilliant I've never heard of one before, being honest about it. Um, would I have looked for one? Don't think so. But now that we have one, I yeah. um, no way would I be without it. It is brilliant. You know, you can mm -hmm. go away for a weekend. OK, you wouldn't maybe wash your hair when you're going just for a weekend. But if you're away for a week's holidays or that, you do need. Well, I personally do. And I presume every other woman does as well. Yeah. But it's nice to be able to go somewhere that you mm -hmm. you don't have to be have, looking for electricity. You exactly. know, because you have everything now yourself, you know, it's very on board. It's very good. Well, do you remember the time we were up in Lucky and we were at the island jetty? So you're completely isolated from everywhere. There is not even a water tap, let alone a hookup for electricity. But yet I had my own personal hairdresser, hairdresser yeah. that day, hadn't He's I? Sitting yeah. out on the, the back deck, I was able to, to dry your hair for you. And it was just such a, a wonderful feeling. It was actually, do you know what? It was it was liberating. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was just, I, I know. I mean, like, forget about men would love for depth sounders and like you would be into all these electronic le chart charts plotters and, and oh, yes. out the window. The yeah. Inverter is the woman's toy. I think what it does is, is it, it it gives you a level of comfort that men are probably quite happy to do without. But the lady in your life would certainly appreciate it. And it does. It, it could be the it could make the difference between um, your partner not wanting to go to the boat. And this could be the one thing that will get that over the line for you. So any questions about it? Ask Carrie and <laughs> <laughs> I can just tell you about the kettle and the hair dryer and all that. No. But any questions, ask Carrie and if he can answer, I'd he say, will. Any, I'd say any questions, <laughs> ask um, Carl. Ask, no, any questions, I'd say ask your emotive in Carrie and, and Shannon. Shannon. They are certainly are the experts in this. We are just finding our way with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah well, so we, we'll have a look at, at fitting it. Yeah, let's and go. Guys, well, it's dead easy to fit. Well, I hope it will be for you, Harry. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay guys, so this is our wiring diagram here. This is our power source coming into the boat. We have our live, our neutral and our earth. The earth is split and it goes through the galvanic isolator. The AC power then continues on here until it comes to our inverter. I've marked it here as AC in because that matches up with what's on the bottom of the inverter, the label on the bottom of the inverter. From there, it comes out to the AC out and it continues to your RCD or your trip switches and it goes out to all your sockets from there. Now, on the DC side of things, I have the positive here marked in red. That comes down and it goes through our inline fuse and from there it goes to the positive side of the battery bank. That's just our domestic battery bank. The negative DC comes down here and it goes through our shunt. Now, the shunt is only there because we have a battery monitor on this system. If you don't have a battery monitor, you won't have a shunt and that negative line will go directly to the negative side of your batteries. And that guys really is that. So if like me guys, you have no idea what a galvanic isolator is, I just Googled it and it's uh, there to protect uh, the boat from stray current coming through uh, the negative terminal. Apparently this is something that can happen when a boat is in a marina and it's you have a number of different boats hooked up together. So this is what the galvanic isolator looks like in real life. I have split the insulation on our cable here. I've taken the earth, connected to the shore side and then the other side of it connects to the boat side. And that really is as simple as that. The other thing to notice is I've mounted vertically so that the cooling vents can work a little bit easier. Now guys, word of caution. Anytime you're, you're dealing with mains electricity, that work needs to be carried out by a qualified electrician. If you're not confident that you're doing it, at least get an electrician to check over your work. So this is my disclaimer. You have been warned. Proceed at your own risk. Get an electrician to do the AC side of this setup. When you set up your cables, you run your cables, your AC in we go into this plug here. This is a, a, male, a male plug and that male plug will go into this one here marked AC in. Simple as that. If you try to put that into the other socket it simply won't go. So the important thing is to make, to make sure that you label these correctly and that you have your wires correct. So there's our AC in. Okay, so from there we have a second plug. I've labeled this one AC out and that simply goes into this port here labeled AC output. Now this cable here travels down and remember on our wiring diagram, this goes to the RCD. The AC in cable, on the other hand, is coming from the outside shore power via the galvanic isolator. That's our AC side of things set up, guys. I haven't plugged into shore power yet. We're going to set up our DC side of things now. Let's have a look at the cables involved here. Okay, guys, here are two DC cables. This is the positive cable, this is the negative cable. Straight away, you can see that these are pretty beefy cables. I stick a calipers onto it and see what we're getting on over the insulation. That's coming up at 16 mil, which makes it a pretty beefy cable. This end here that doesn't have any ring on it, that will go into the inverter, into the positive DC. This end here will go to the positive side of the battery. And now along the way, we have an inline fuse. These cables were all made up for us by Euromotive, especially for this inverter and they fitted this inline fuse for us as well as all the rings on the end of each cable. And in fairness, that's a pretty professional job. Now the thing to know about these is that both of these cables are exactly the same length. Now you'll notice that this one here, the negative DC cable has a break in it. Let's see why. Let's have a look at our wiring diagram once again. And there you can see clearly that the shunt will be fitted into that portion there. So we're gonna put the shunt between these two portions here this end here will go to the inverter. A shirt, our shunt goes in there and then this end goes to the negative side of our battery bank. Right, let's set it up. One of the things that I like to do is to use petroleum jelly or Vaseline and just put it onto all those electrical connections. It just stops them corroding. 
the best way to do that is to get an old paintbrush like I'm using here and that gets the Vaseline in between all the strands of copper wire and that'll stand to them it'll help the protection help to protect them from any dampness and stop the stop getting bad corroded connections in years and months to come so this is where I'm going to mount the unit. It's not secure to the wall yet. I just have it offered up here just to check cable lengths. I'm going to take it back off the wall now and we're going to fit the two DC cables. Okay, so to fit the two DC cables, I'm using an Allen key here. I'll just put this DC cable all the way in and I'm being careful to make sure that there's no copper wire being exposed there. No little uh, threads of it sticking out that are likely to short circuit. And remember, these are not actually connected onto the battery yet, so I get that really tight. And the red is for the positive, and of course the black then is the DC negative. Just make sure that's very tight. And we do the same with the negative cable. This one I probably was a little bit over enthusiastic when I put Vaseline onto it, and there's lots of bits of fluff on it. But again, it's just a matter of I give it a little twist as I'm putting it in just to make sure that there's no bits of copper been exposed. Push it in all the way and then lock it down good and tight with that Allen key. And that's brought home nice and snug. That's, that's what makes a good solid connection. No copper been exposed and the connection's nice and tight. And again, you can see the color coding red for positive and the black for negative. That's the DC cables connected. So when we want to control the inverter, we're going to use this. This is a control panel and it's connected to the inverter by means of a patch cable or an RJ45 cable or Cat5 cable, if you want to call it that. And um, that simply clicks into here. The other end clicks into either of those two ports on the base of the inverter. And what that allows us to do is that the inverter can be anywhere on the boat. It doesn't have to be in view, it can be out of sight, but you can still control everything through the control panel. Right, so that's set up nearly complete. Just plug in AC in, AC out. The one last thing to do is to plug in our patch lid. Just push that in to hear a click home. So now it just remains to put steps back into place and we're sorted. Okay, so just to go through the control panel, there's a little switch here and it has charger only. The next one is marked off and the next one is on. So when you're on the boat and you're not plugged into the mains, you're out off grid, you leave it in the on position, the inverter comes on at that stage and it will run all your domestic appliances. Off, well come on, that's self-explanatory. We're plugged into the mains now, so I'm going to put it to charger only and what will happen there is the um, charger will kick on, that will keep the batteries fully charged up. I'll just put that on there and you can see the charge he's putting in. This it's slowly go up there depending on what's what kind of state of charge the batteries are in at the moment anyway but what also happens in that setting is that the power is sent to all the sockets from the mains now not through the inverter but directly from the mains into all the sockets so that's where we get our power from then so there you go so guys there are positives and negatives with this setup we looked at some of the positives let's have a look at some of the negatives now okay guys this is my domestic battery setup these are lead acid uh, batteries they're just starter batteries for trucks so they don't even deep cycle batteries okay they don't like to be discharged too much at all and this is the weak link in our chain because these batteries produce 12 volts but what an inverter does is it sucks 240 volts out of a 12 volt battery that's a multiple of 20 volt that's quite a serious increase so that's why you only use inverters for a short period of time and um, hopefully the batteries will hold out but so far I have to tell you, they've been okay. Keep the fingers crossed that that lasts. Yeah, just Thanks. before we go, yeah. if you're interested and if you want to contact your emotives in Carrick and Shannon, yes. they, and say that you saw the Driftwood Boat blog and you saw it on the blog, they will give you a discount. 
in fact, I think they're giving quite a hefty discount. Is that so, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so many, just make sure yeah. you mention the Driftwood Bob blog. Exactly. And don't forget, thumbs up. Cheerio, guys. Cheerio. Subscribing to the Driftwood Boat Blog is absolutely free. All you do is you go to YouTube, in the search bar, type in Driftwood Boat Blog. And up the top there you'll see the Driftwood Boat Blog logo, just click on that and that brings you to our channel and to over 100 videos. If you click the subscribe button, click the bell, tick all, you'll get a notification every time we bring out a new video and you'll also be helping the channel. Thanks for subscribing.